بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله We're here again for another sacred text message So this is an age of text messages and people forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually has texted us with his message and it's in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has sent constantly guidance to this species and there are those who follow it and those who reject it and then there are those poor souls that have never even heard of it and those of us who have heard of it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for not conveying that message to the people around us when I was uh, I brought a, um, a beautiful Mauritanian scholar to the United States uh, many years ago, Sheikh Khatri Wadbwaiba, a really, really beautiful man, uh, very learned. He, he's what they call Adib. He, he was uh, a, a beautiful grammarian uh, from a grammatical family, and he, he knew all the poetry of the Arabs. He actually memorized a book called, uh, uh, that's, uh, it's like the Norton's Anthology of Arabic Literature, and he memorized the whole book by rote. It was really quite stunning. Uh, and he could uh, just recite from any of the great poets. And I was once in a taxi with him in, in, in uh, Arabia, in, in, in the Hijaz. And uh, the, the taxi driver quoted something from, uh, from one of the Mu'allaqat. And then Sheikh Khatri just quoted the whole Mu'allaqat to him. It was really quite uh, remarkable. But he, he, he was also um, somebody who knew quite a bit of uh, fiqh and other things. He loved the Qur'an. Uh, he still teaches the Qur'an to children in Mauritania. So he, he was somebody, I think, uh, who we, we would call a wise man. But one of the things that he did while he was here, if we ever introduced him to a non-Muslim, he would immediately say, no, 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 he, he's not a Muslim. And I'd say, yeah, he's not a Muslim. We'd speak in Arabic. And he'd say, tell him that I have a word for him, that if he will say it and believe it, that it will remove all of his difficulties, it will remove his grief, it, he'll be able to sleep at night peacefully, and it's Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. And that's what he would say, and I would translate, and nobody ever took offense, it was really quite stunning. And they always saw it as something just because he was so sincere. But I asked him about it later, uh, he said, I don't want these people on Yom Qiyamah to come up to me and say, I met you and you never told me about uh, this religion. And he did it consistently with every single non-Muslim that he met. Uh, it was really quite remarkable. I would not recommend doing it like that because he, for some reason, just by the blessing of Allah, he could get away with it. But I think we would be remiss if we did not at least try to let people know that we're Muslims and if they were interested uh, that that we could uh, because not everybody's interested, but some people genuinely are. So, wisdom—it's such an interesting concept. One of the things that the Quran tells us is "لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعْثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا." Allah has blessed the believers by sending from them a messenger. بَعْثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْرُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ So that's uh, in Surah Ali Imran, but there's a similar iteration in Surah Al-Jumu'ah uh, in, in the chapter called uh, the Friday uh, Congregation. But basically Allah sent this messenger مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ uh, there's a shadh qira'ah that says من أنفسهم from, from their souls but also from the most precious amongst them and يَتْرُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ He recites to them these signs وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ and he, he purifies them يُزَكِّيهِمْ تَزْكِيَةً وَيُعَلِّمُهُمْ and he teaches them الكتابة والحكمة the book and the wisdom. So one of the things, it's not enough to know simply the book. You have to have the wisdom that accompanies the book. There's a lot of people that have no wisdom in their behavior. Uh, they might be very devout Muslims, but they don't act wisely. One of the things that Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya, I've heard him say this many times, he says, our scholars, many of them know ma qarallah, 
ولكن لا يعرفوا لما قال الله. Many scholars know what God has said, but they don't know why he said it. And the why is very interesting because in Western tradition, a traditional wisdom is about causes, the why. It really is about why. Scientists today, what they call empirical science, is all about how or what, but it's not about why. They can't tell you why. They can explain things, but they don't know why. And so in this, we're told that the Prophet was sent to teach, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the book and the wisdom, the hikmah. Even if they had been in manifest error before this book. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah says, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَمَا أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ يَعِذُكُمْ بِهِ So, remind, udhkuru, be reminded of the blessings of God upon you and what He has revealed to you from the book and the wisdom. يَعِذُكُمْ بِهِ He is exhorting you with, with it. And so, Wisdom here, according to Imam Shafi in his famous book called the Risada, which is really the foundational book of Usul al-Fiqh or the, the fundamentals of, of jurisprudence, he said the hikmah here means the sunnah of the Prophet. So the, the wisdom is how the Prophet acted. And one of the things about the Prophet وسلم, is that he did in every situation, he understood it to be a unique situation. He, he was not somebody who simply applied the same thing to every situation. He, so I'll give you an example. Some people came to the Prophet ﷺ and they said, they said they doubted this meat that they had. And the Prophet said, Sammillah wa kul Just say Bismillah and then eat it. When they left, Aisha asked him, why did you say that? He said, they're new in Islam. And then also he understood that they... Hunger was a real serious problem in the Arabian Peninsula. He was making it easy for them. Just say, say Bismillah and then eat it. Because they were at one level. And, and this is how he understood things. And a lot of us, people become new Muslims and suddenly they're expected to be like the Sahaba. Even though the people that are teaching them certainly aren't like the Sahaba. I mean, I had a situation many years ago. It really broke my heart. But I had a situation where this uh, woman uh, became uh, Muslim and the first thing she asked me about was makeup. And, and there was other uh, women in, in the room, you know, because I was teaching a class and, there was, and, and it just struck me as odd why she would ask that. And so I said, no, 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 don't, makeup's not, don't worry about makeup, it's not a problem. Well, the other woman got really angry because apparently they told her that makeup was haram. Whereas I would never, like a new Muslim, you know, that's just not what you want to focus on. They have to get established in their religion. A little bit later, she actually said shahada with me. A little bit later, I asked about her and they said, oh, she left Islam. And I said, why? And they said, oh, they said she had to divorce her husband. So these are the type problems that we have in our community of just not having hikmah. Hikmah is such an important thing. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again in Surah Al-Baqarah, says يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ أَوْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا وَمَا يَذَّكْرُ إِلَّا أُولَ الْأَلْبَابِ So he gives wisdom to whomever he pleases. And whoever has been given wisdom has been given a great thing, a great good. But only those who have deep Inner understanding, al-bab, lub, is like the inner core. People of innermost core, they're the ones that recollect this truth. And so it's really, really important for us to recognize that um, wisdom is very important. So what is wisdom? Well, I just want to look at what in traditional uh, Western tradition, because hikmah was very important in, uh, in Greece. In fact, the philosophia, uh, the, the philosophy is the love of Sophia, of wisdom. And, and so, and that came from Pythagoras because originally the, the, the sophists called themselves wise, but Pythagoras thought it was arrogant. So he said, I'm not wise, but I'm a lover of wisdom. 
out of his humility. And so wisdom, Sophia in Greek, is, is according to Aristotle, it's the highest level of the intellect. So Aristotle defines, and, and our Muslim tradition took this uh, taxonomy of the intellect from Aristotle, so we'll find this in our books. Um, Aristotle defined five intellectual virtues. So two were practical, what he called um, techne and phronesis. This is what we would call uh, like fen and then practical wisdom, hekma amalia. So it would be like craftsmanship or artisanship. So knowing how to do something, like a, a carpenter has a kind of techni, like a, 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 and technon in, in uh, Greek meant a, uh, an artisan, right? That's where you get technology, is the study of craft, right? And so uh, an architect is the master craftsman. So arche means ruler, and techne is, is craft, so it's the ruling craft. So the architect is the rule, he's the ruler of the craftsman because he's the one that has the whole picture. So the, the carpenters are down there building the building, but it's the architect who has the building in his mind and in his blueprint. He's the one that sees the whole picture, so he's the master. So uh, th that techne is a type of intellectual virtue of knowing how to do something. And then phronesis is practical wisdom. So for instance, in medicine, when, when a, a physician uh, is, uh, is um, taken to court, uh, they will always have these expert witnesses uh, to determine whether it was malpractice or not. And what they'll say is, would a prudent doctor have done this? In other words, somebody who had practical wisdom, who had what we, what we call prudence, prudentia from the Latin prudentia, which is sophia or phronesis in uh, Greek is prudentia in Latin, which is where we get our word prudence, which is different from wisdom. So it's practical wisdom. The Arabs call them both hikmah. And then you move into uh, the higher order of the intellect, which is uh, in, in Arabic, it's the nous. I mean, sorry, in Greek, it's called nous, and then the episteme, and then the, the sophia. In, in our tradition, it was hadz, which is the intuitive power. In other words, it's, it's knowing things. Like, for instance, we know that the, the whole is greater than the part. We just know that. You can't prove that. There's no proof for it. It's, it's simply a self-evident truth. Like you either get it or you don't. If you don't, then you, most people would consider you microcephalic. It's just something, you know, you're, for whatever reasons, your intellect uh, never matured enough to grasp those. And there are people like that, unfortunately. So the next is episteme, which is scientia in Latin. So... This, the scientia in Latin is, is basically um, what we would call ilm, it's, it's knowledge. And so that type of knowledge, you know, science, is basically certain knowledge through causes. So it's knowing something through causes. And so that means you know the why. So, for instance, science is basically knowing why. So, for instance, if I say, in uh, nazaydan, Baraba Amran. If you know why Zaid is Mansub and Amr is Mansub, then you know the why of grammar that Inna and her sisters make the subject Mansub and the predicate Marfu'a. That, that's the why. And so you'll know that. And, and, and Aristotle said that's why a wise man can teach because he knows the whys. W-H-Y-S. He knows the why. So his wisdom is in knowing the wise. He's wise because he knows the wise. And so that, when, 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 when the Quran says whoever is given wisdom, well, what are the attributes of a wise human being? In the Western tradition, Aristotle actually gives a, a, a specific definition of a wise human being. He says a man is said to be wise who knows all things even difficult things with certitude and knowledge of the cause, who seeks science for its own sake and orders and persuades others. So those are six attributes that he's defined a wise person. The first is he must know all things. Well, how do you know all things? Because you know God. If you know God, you know all things. Because everything is contained in God. And so that's the highest knowledge. And that's the prophetic knowledge. 
So if you know God, you know all things. Uh, what, what is uh, Yunus Imre, the famous Turkish poet, says that Kuluma Tahwahu Mojudum Fidatilla. Everything that you desire exists with God. So everything. So once you know God, every, you know the why of all things, because. Allah created everything. So if you know that, you know the why of all things. So that is the first thing. And then he must know difficult things, not easily attainable by all. So the most difficult things are the most abstract things. And this is why we tend to recognize intelligence. The, the more people can grasp abstract things, difficult things, uh, the higher level of intelligence we see in them. But the most abstract thing in the world is understanding what we cannot understand, which is God. So our knowledge of God is a negative knowledge. We, we know la ilaha illallah, but we don't know God's essence. We can never know God's essence. So it's a negative knowledge. It's called the via negativa in the Western tradition. And in, in our tradition, it's the selbiya, a tariqa selbiya. It's what God is not, is what we know. The highest thing that you can know about God is God is one. But even his oneness, because he's infinite, so we cannot know or understand that. We can only grasp some portion of it through our knowledge of the nature of one. That one. And Allah loves witr. In Allah, witrun yuhibr witr. He's odd and he loves the odd. And one of the things that Pythagoras said about the odd, he said the odd is form and and uh, delineation or demarcation, it gives meanings to things, the odd. So uh, meaning comes through the odd. And he said that the even is formless that, and, and non-delimiting. Uh, and, 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 and his proof for that is a very interesting proof. He said if you take square numbers, there's a clear pattern in square numbers. So if you take like uh, the first square root is 1, Right? And then you add it to the next odd number, you get the first square number, which is 4, which is the square number of 2 squared. And then if you add the next odd number to that, so you add uh, uh, 3 to 5, no, if you add 4 to 5, you get 9, which is the square number of 3 squared. And then if you add the next square number to that, 7 to 9, you get 16, which is the square of, uh, of, uh, of 4 squared. It's the square number of 4. Next one's 25. Next one's 36, 49. It goes on. So there's an incredible pattern because Allah loves the odd. So he put that pattern in the odd, out of, whereas even doesn't have that pattern. It's really amazing. These are some of the mysteries of, uh, of numbers. But, and then he must have certitude concerning what he knows. So a wise man does not have opinion. He has certainty. And the most important thing to be certain about is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you're certain about Allah, you are wise. And, and a real certainty. It's not the fanatic. Uh, you know, the fanatic has a, a, a certitude that is more about his own fear because he's so frightened of having to think so he just stops thinking. That's not real certitude. That's just fanaticism. That's why fanatics hate anything that challenges their faith. Whereas a truly wise man is never taken aback by anything that would quote unquote challenge his faith because he's open to, to listening to the atheist uh, give his proofs because he knows that the atheist uh, is is lost in his own darkness, but not out of fanaticism, out of his own certitude of the existence of God. And then he must be able to give the causes of what is investigated and so able to teach. So in any science that the wise man knows, he can teach it or she can teach it because he or she knows the causes. They know why the, 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 these are marfu'ats. They know why these are mansubat in grammar. We know why this is in the subjective case. We know why in subjective mood. We know why this is optative. We know why this is a predicate as opposed to a subject. And on and on. Those whys enable you to teach. And then his science must be desirable for itself, not wished for some practical purpose, such as that of providing the necessities of life or for entertainment. So what's interesting, there's three basic types of sciences in, in the world. One of them are, are the utilitarian sciences. 
utilitarian sciences are the, th the sciences that we need just to survive as a species or to make our life more comfortable. So for instance, agriculture is a utilitarian science. Nobody knows the name of the poor fellow that worked out uh, about phosphates and potassium and, and how to enhance uh, agricultural growth because he was a utilitarian scientist. So nobody knows the name. Nobody knows the name of the poor man that invented the, um, the air conditioner. Even though, like in many countries now, the air condition is like one of their greatest blessings, yet they don't know the name of the man who invented the air conditioner because it's a utilitarian art. Nobody knows the name. I actually know his name and because I feel like we, sh we should honor this man all over the world. Tsai Lun in the first century invented paper, and yet very few people know that he invented paper. Nobody knows the man who invented the washing machine. Why? Because these are all utilitarian arts. Whereas we know the fine artists and the speculative artists, and we honor them. The fine artists give us pleasure in their art. And so we honor actors and musicians and, 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 and people that uh, can do all these wonderful things. And we know their names and people. Why? Because they give people pleasure. It's not, it's, there's nothing useful in what they're doing other than maybe recreation. But we, we honor them because it's above the utilitarian arts. But the highest is the speculative arts, those things that are studied solely for their own sake. And the highest of these things are things that, that, uh, that like theology, like just knowledge of God. Um, and, and then the liberal arts, which are, those are the arts that are studied to enable you to think deeply about the speculative arts. So they in themselves, are considered studied for their own sake, but they're a ladder to uh, the highest, which is um, things like uh, theology and metaphysics, and these are the these are the high arts in our tradition, and and also in the in the Western tradition, which is where they dovetail. And surprisingly, our scholars gave so much uh, to the Western tradition. It's really quite stunning when it's it's it, and it's sad that they don't know how much that our tradition has given them. But these are all came from the Quran, from the wisdom of the Quran. The entire Islamic civilization is predicated on the book and the hikmah, on, on the Quran and on the hikmah. They're all just they're just they're all just extra from 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 that. Um, and I mean that's quite stunning when you think about that. That they all just came from without without the Quran, there is no Ghazali, there's no uh, Ibn Sina, there's no none of these people would have ever uh, had what they did. They might have done other things, and but not what they gave the world, and uh, and so it's it's just it's remarkable. So wisdom is a great thing, and uh, we have an entire chapter uh, named after one of the wisest men that ever lived, who's Luqman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about him, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ أَنَشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ We gave Luqman wisdom that you should be grateful to God. And that's the highest wisdom. It's just gratitude for the, the blessing of being alive. What a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be grateful for our lives. This is such a great wisdom. So if you're in a state of gratitude, the Prophet sallallahu said, if you're able, be grateful for whatever Allah sends you. But if you're not able, at least be patient. But if you're able, be grateful for whatever Allah sends you. Because if it's from Allah, it's for a wisdom. It's for a hikmah. And he's al-hakim. Alhamdulillah.